Penn State and Iowa may seem like the obvious shoe-ins to win the collegiate wrestling duels on Rockfin, but I'm here to tell you that some of these pools, as you look at this graphic, are going to be tighter than you think. So what are the actual predictions that I have for the upcoming event? Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name is Josiah, and welcome to Fanco Wrestling, your source for college wrestling news and discussion. And I am super excited for the collegiate wrestling duels. I mean, you may have seen on the channel, I've been putting out so many videos, and now the prediction, the breakdown video, what exactly do I think will happen at the event? First of all, I want to give you a quick reminder that these event, this event is happening live December 20th and 21st on Rockfin. If you're not going to the event in Niceville, Florida, you can watch on Rockfin with an active subscription, and then there's a pay-per-view fee uh, to actually watch the event. Uh, a quick look at the schedule as well as we look at the pools, uh, which is actually you know important because there's a red pool, and then there's a blue pool, and they'll be wrestling alongside each other uh, throughout the duration of the day, which will be a, a lot of fun. I mean, they're going to be wrestling from 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until like literally 11 p.m., like 12 hours hours of wrestling. Now, don't don't worry if you can't watch the entire event because I'll be keeping you updated with everything going on right here on this channel. But what exactly was going to happen in the blue pool uh, as we look at these teams with uh, Virginia Tech, Arizona State, and Hofstra, Penn State, Cornell, and Northern Iowa. With these teams, I mean, in, in pool one. So let's start off at the top, and we're literally going to go like Write down the schedule with what will happen at this event. So, Virginia Tech, Arizona State, and Hofstra. Uh, it's going to be a real competition amongst the top two teams, honestly. Uh, it's I think like Hofstra may be able to pull off a couple of wins. And I think it's going to be some good competition for them. But really, this is a race between Arizona State and Virginia Tech. It's going to, as we look at the duel between Arizona State and Virginia Tech, uh, it's going to be going on simultaneously with Mizzou and NC State. And you're not going to want to take your eyes off of either of those screens. But starting at the top, Latona has a chance to get his mojo back, honestly. Uh, he's had a bit of a rut recently with a few losses this season. Uh, even though he is an All-American, just hasn't been able to perform as well as he usually has. And I think it, going up against a guy like Brandon Courtney, who was a national finalist, if he can find a way to beat him, that's a way to jump back right up in the rankings and, and really rev back up there. And there are plenty of All-American matchups between Arizona State and Virginia Tech, honestly. Uh, Ten All-Americans total wrestling these duels. And I think Virginia Tech can win down below. Uh, like I said, maybe the Latona matchup, Corbin Myers and Michael McGee is a good one. Hillegas versus uh, Vasquez. I mean, we have some really good matchups set here. But then when we get to Parco and Teamer and Valencia, just that middle bulk of Arizona State's lineup, uh, I think that they really have an advantage to beat Virginia Tech there. Uh, even though, you know, it's going to be some good matches, I think that. Arizona State has the advantage here. Then Virginia Tech is going to come back alive with Makai Lewis and Hunter Bowen. I think that that's where they can really uh, do well there and, and get right back up on the board and, and make the score close. So I think it's going to come down to heavyweight, honestly, between Nathan Traxler and Colton Schultz. And although like Traxler has found a way, like it, it, the a couple of matches so far this year have come down to heavyweight with Virginia Tech. And Traxler has found a way to beat Mizzou. I mean, that came down to the last match, and he won there. I think that he's just not going to be able to beat Colton Schultz, and because of that, Arizona State's going to win 19-16 to is my prediction. 19-16. to And as we move on to blue pool number two, Cornell, Penn State, and Northern Iowa. This is going to be a tough, like, look, you got Penn State, who's one of the top two teams in the country, and then you got Cornell, who's a top 10 team. Northern Iowa is still a top 25 ranked team in the country, but it's going to be tough for them to pull out a victory in this pool. I think that, you know, they're wrestling the first couple uh, duels in the evening session, so that means it's going to come down to Penn State and Cornell, and whoever wins that duel is likely going to go on to the championship finals. I don't see Northern Iowa pulling off an upset uh, over Cornell, but man, Cornell, uh, and, and real quick aside, yeah, Cornell is wrestling at this event, even though like the university, I guess, is shut down now. Uh, know that Cornell is still going to Niceville, Florida in wrestling in this event. So 
Anyways, back to the the matchups uh, between these two teams. Penn State and Cornell. RBY versus Vito Rougeau at 133 pounds is going to be like a a stunning match. I mean, these two guys are going to be high flying, flexible, like scrambly, like. I don't know what's going to happen here. I think that Aron Young is going to be, uh, you know, he's the top dog to be. He's going to be the better wrestler here, I think. But, man, who knows? Vito could pull off an upset here. Carter Sirachi and Chris Foca at 174 should also be a pretty good match to watch. Uh, I Chris Foca coming into this year as, like, the young guy, as the newer guy at Cornell, I think had a lot of high hopes. He took a loss at Cliff Keen Las Vegas, which... I guess an early season loss, uh, but this will be a real test to see how he does against a guy like Carter Sirachi. Uh, Max Dean and Cardenas, old teammates. You know, Dean, I think just the entire storyline here with Dean, he left Cornell, now he's at Penn State. These two teams are matching up against each other, and I think that that will be interesting to see just him coming out on the mat uh, against his old team. Now, Penn State, I think, will start out strong, but Cornell can mount a comeback with some of their middleweights, uh, with Yanni and Yapujan and, and Julian Ramirez. I'm super excited to see him wrestle again uh, at this event. But honestly, once they get to the top, like Penn State is just going to really start cruising you know it, it, these are their their toughest guys with Carter Sirachi and Aaron Brooks and Max Dean uh Greg Kirkfleet like it's going to be tough to beat those guys so I think Penn State comes out with a win 23 to 10 it's it's a tough to compete with the bonus points that Penn State is going to put on the board here so that sets a day two matchup championship finals between Arizona State and Penn State but first let's talk about some of these placing matchups uh, including the so and by the way here are my predictions for uh, all these scores that I think are going to happen and with that being said as we get on to day two uh, you can download actually the entire score sheets for this event I have score sheets for Every single duel in the blue pool, in the red pool, download them for free. They're for free on the Fanco Wrestling Shop. I have it linked up down in the description below. You print them out, you fill in your score predictions, and then you see what actually happens so you can keep track. It's just a fun little uh, competition that you can have amongst your friends and family, uh, or just you know do it by yourself or, or even against me. Uh, so as we move into the day two between the... Uh, Blue pool, and this is when they'll also have the red and blue pool wrestling side by side. Hofstra in Northern Iowa is the first matchup I want to talk about as they go for fifth and sixth place. Uh, I think Hofstra, you know, coming into this event, I like I said, they're going to get some good competition, and and I think they could win a couple of matches uh, against. Northern Iowa they can win it at 157 as well as heavyweight but ultimately I think that Northern Iowa is going to win by a score of 26 to 6 moving on to the third and fourth place match Virginia Tech and Cornell in the blue pool it's going to come down to tiebreakers I think 15 to 15 so let's take a look at these it's such a great matchup because and both teams better be on their A game. They already have multiple duels under their belt from day one. And I think that's as we look at, you know, from day one to day two, because we don't see a lot of dual meet style tournaments like the collegiate duels, right? Like the wrestling multiple duels on day one, then go into day two, wrestle another duel. And man, they better be on their A game because a tougher team's going to end up winning. Already, uh, Greg Diakmahalis has already had a pretty good start to the season, but he's a chance to get in the rankings with a win over Latona. I think that's a good matchup that we should be watching out for. Uh, Myers and Rujau should also be a battle at 133. And, and Donian, I mean, he's a guy who fought Sammy Sasso until the bitter end, even though Sasso got the better of him. Uh, and Yanni... You better believe that he's going to be fighting Yanni until the bitter end as well. It's going to come down to Traxler and uh, Fernandez, I think, at heavyweight again. And the more, t I mean, their these teams are going to be tired. They're going to be worn out. They're going to be injured. The tougher team is going to prevail. And for me, for me, I'm giving it to Cornell. And it's going to come down to match point scored that's the criteria that it's going to come down to just in my opinion 15 to 15 Cornell wins moving us on to Penn State and Arizona State two incredibly tough all-american lineups right Arizona State's going to have to find bonus at 125 157 and 165 but against a team like Penn State 
that's not easy. Penn State scores bonus. They also don't give up a lot of bonus. But if Arizona State wants to find a way to win, they got to score some bonus at a couple of those weights and find ways to pull some upsets. Penn State's going to be looking for bonus up top, as they usually do, and I think that they have a chance to get it against Arizona State. I'm going to pull up this lineup one more time. Uh, they have a potential to pull an upset at 197, maybe, with Cordell Norfleet, who's a top 10 ranked guy in the country against a guy like Max Dean. I don't see it happening, but I think it'll still be a good matchup nonetheless. And I think the best matchup, honestly, between these two teams is going to be between Greg Kirkfleet and Colton Schultz. Uh, it's com coming down to the wire, right? Sh Schultz placed higher than Kirkfleet last year at the NCAA Championships. But I think Kirkfleet uh, has a little bit of a renewed... Uh, I mean, he's not injured this year for one, so he's a little bit renewed, rejuvenated, ready to go again. And if you remember the last matchup between these two teams, between Arizona State and Penn State, remember what happened? Arizona State pulled off the upset of the century when they stopped Penn State's dual meet streak. So could they do it here? No, I don't think they will. I think Penn State's going to win 21-12. to So Penn State's going to be the champs. Uh, and... Arizona State second, Cornell third, and so on and so forth, which moves us into actually the Red Pool. And in the Red Pool, uh, we have NC State, Mizzou, Binghamton, Iowa, Lehigh, and Central Michigan. And if you want to find out more about the predictions that I have for the Red Pool and how I think that's going to turn out, I know there are going to be some tight matchups. I mean, potentially Iowa and, and NC State. You can check out this top video right here. That'll take you right there.